It's been a while since the Gulf Coast has seen a hurricane. And if you forgot what it looks like, this is what it looks like. A major hurricane with maximum sustained winds at 125 miles per hour. The bullseye of that heavier rain, again, more to the south and west of here. So that's where that main flash flood threat is going to be, right between Petrie and Highland Home, just east of Highway 331. If I were here this time two weeks ago on December 26th, when it reached that historic crest, I couldn't be standing here. I would be underwater. The water would be above my head. As temperatures drop into tomorrow, that's when we're going to be seeing that transition from rain to snow. As that rain hits the surface, it freezes. So that's probably why I can't feel my toes right now, <laughs> despite the three layers of socks. A few clouds overnight. Again, those will be holding on. But by tomorrow morning, as our turkey is basically showing us here, they're going to be moving on out of here. And we're already getting those over 20 mile per hour gusts, so there's a chance we we can see much higher than that tomorrow, but still at tropical storm force. A lot of the lightning associated with this rain we've been seeing has been staying offshore, so that's good news at least. No severe weather in place, but it is just kind of gloomy for a Friday. Based on radar last night, it definitely looked indicative of a tornado. It was a tornado worn storm. By the time you wake up on Monday morning, boom, look at that. Temperatures could get close to freezing. I feel so old right now, but they've been showing me how they work. What are they called again? Hoverboards. Hoverboards. See? Old. And now from the Forewarn Storm Center, meteorologist Lauren Linehan. Well, compared to where we've been over the past few days, temperatures have been warming up in a big way, especially in the afternoon hours. So we're getting closer and closer each day to 80 degrees, seeing some mid to upper 70s on the map now. Honestly, feeling pretty comfortable. A good day to do some stuff outdoors once you get off work or get home from school. What we have been seeing is that warmer air is basically locked up in the southeast. Any colder air that's trying to get down here just not going to happen. It's basically staying well north of here and no chance of seeing any of those more wintry like temperatures coming down here over the next several days. Instead, we're going to be on a warming trend as well. We're still seeing some drier air in place, but what's going to happen is it's going to turn just a touch muggier here as we progress through the next couple of days. So dew points are going to be on the rise and that's all because of those winds out of the south. So winds coming in from the south are helping to pull in a little bit more heat and a little bit more moisture from the Gulf of Mexico. So it's going to be running above average here with our temperatures over the next several days days. Doppler radar in the immediate wiregrass quiet, but notice back off to our west, just west of the I-65 corridor. That is where we are tracking a few showers. So a little bit of light rain falling. This is not heavy rain by any means, but a little piece of energy moving through as it's coming eastward. A lot of this rain is going to be fizzling out, so nothing too exciting here. Maybe somewhere like Covington County, Crenshaw County, Pike County could maybe squeeze a little stray shower out of this as we go into the morning hours tomorrow. But some of that heavier rain that we're looking at in Louisiana, it's just not going to be able to pack a punch as it moves farther eastward. But we are seeing some nice light rainfall moving through a lot of north and central Alabama. But here in the Wiregrass, the closer you are to the Gulf Coast, definitely going to be hard to come by. So as we go into the evening, what you're going to notice is cloud cover increasing. So we've already begun to see a few clouds in some of our northwestern counties. As we go into the overnight hours, clouds going to be moving in. And so that's going to help it not to be quite as chilly in the morning because those clouds kind of serving as a blanket. So waking up Thursday morning to more cloud cover than we've seen here recently, maybe a stray shower somewhere like Pike County. And then as we go into the rest of the day, transitioning to more partly cloudy skies, but there's still going to be an enough sunshine that our temperatures are going to be warming up closer to 80 degrees. Maybe some of you on the other side of the 80 degree mark. And then as we go into Wednesday overnight, beginning to clear out a little bit and more sunshine back in the forecast for Friday, mostly sunny skies in the morning, though, we're looking at temperatures in the upper 50s, so certainly a touch milder than it's been here recently. And then by tomorrow, temperatures right around 80 degrees. Now, as far as the tropics, November still in hurricane season the last month but looking good all through the Atlantic Basin, at least for right now. Along the Gulf for tomorrow, holding on to those southeasterly winds at 5 to 10 knots. And then as we go into the overnight hours, again, going to see a few clouds moving in, a low of 58 in the morning. And then by tomorrow afternoon, a solid 80 degrees under partly cloudy to partly sunny skies. Of course, the National Peanut Festival is coming up on Friday, and that's where we're seeing those 80 degree temperatures really taking hold and really not much going to change here. We're going to be stuck in 
in a pretty stagnant pattern. Mm. So at least there won't be any surprises for the peanut festival. Right. You know? I love how we're just going backwards with our weather we patterns. Are. I know that really <laughs> teased us last week. Kiowa. Riley and Shelton, a few names we've become acquainted with this week, each animal with an inspiring story. Tonight, we follow Dusty the Bald Eagle, an animal who was cared for by Big Ben Wildlife Sanctuary, on her journey back into the wild. We found her up here on the side of the road. We'd been back and forth by her a couple of times, and she was in the ditch, and we knew something was wrong when we found her because she was trying to fly and cook. Farmer James Peacock of Sampson doesn't think bald eagles are an unusual sight in lower Alabama. They often snag catfish from his pond. But Dusty wasn't looking for a quick meal. It appeared she had been hit by a vehicle. She didn't have any broken bones or anything like that. It was just mo mostly road rash and a lot of mud that turned into dirt that's Hence the name Dusty, because every time she would try to fly, dust was everywhere. After looking online, James and his co-worker discovered Big Ben Wildlife Sanctuary, run by husband and wife team John and Terry Morse. He knew finding Dusty help was the right thing to do. There's no use in letting an animal suffer if he can help it. And, and something like that's a national bird, the bald eagle is. And, it's really important this part of the area because there's not about a few of them around here. During her three week stay, Dusty made a name for herself in her short time at Big Bend. Feisty. I think the quintessential, like what you would imagine a bald eagle would be, is pretty much what she is. She comes at you with her beak and her talons, and it's 400 pounds per pressure per square inch in each talon, so that's a lot. But Dusty wasn't trying to ruffle any feathers, she was just ready to return home. After a vet visit revealed Dusty's health was back up to par, she made her case. I can't wait to get to freedom. The release is the most phenomenal part. It's my favorite. <laughs> because it was like, it's so important that they do make it back into the wild. But it makes it even more important that so many people have showed up and to let us know Big Ben's doing everything right. Over 30 spectators joined Big Ben staff and volunteers for Dusty's release. Staff members were surprised by the turnout, and they say it's encouraging that so many people support their mission. I think it's good that people are interested. That's a step in the right direction. John and Terry gave James the honor of setting Dusty free as a thank you for saving her life. As everyone looked on in anticipation, Dusty posed for a final picture and took off.